Welcome everyone, uh, really happy to be here providing you with this tour for the Can You Conference. Uh, my name is Alicia Medina, I am an architect and a small business owner. I co-own two businesses in the Mount Pleasant industrial area, Faculty Brewing and Oddity Kombucha. Uh, and the tour will be mostly focused on that industrial polygon, which is framed uh, by Main Street and Canby Street and 2nd Avenue and Broadway. Uh, and I wanted to start right here, we're in the Olympic Village side of things, and I just wanted to point out Craft Beer Market. Uh, just, it's just like one of the remnants of the industrial history of the, the neighborhood, and I just wanted to remind everyone that although the Olympic Village today is like a highly developed area, uh, it's obviously mostly residential, but its origins were very industrial, which is like what connects it to the industrial polygon, which is where the tour will be focused for the most part. So before we get moving into that direction, I just wanted to point out a few kind of historic references. Uh, the industrial polygon of Mount Pleasant was uh, the first residential area that developed outside of downtown Vancouver. So in a way, it's like Vancouver's original suburb. Uh, and it was mostly homes for people that work in the industries that were based out of the Falls Creek neighborhood, which we can see kind of across the street. Uh, and it wasn't until the 1950s that industrial uses were allowed to take place in that area. And very quickly they took over all the single family homes. So right now, through the years, the neighborhood has become mostly industrial and now there's new changes coming to it, like with, I don't know, new businesses, coffee shops, breweries, and a lot of tech industries that have been moving into the neighborhood are kind of bringing that new wave of change, turning it from industrial into a more kind of creative office type of neighborhood. Uh, so I just wanted to, to point out that, that reference because as we're walking through it, we're going to see quite a few different building typologies, some of which are the original homes uh, from the 1800s. And it's just like such a clear divide, right? Like this giant avenue is just like, which it's just interesting. And also I think it points out to what's going to happen on this side of the road whenever the zoning is allowed to change because it's like when you have that as a precedent like obviously there's going to be a mirror that's going to happen on the other side of the road which I understand like I think it would be good for the scale of the city but it starts to creep into the industrial zone that was protected for so long. Yeah, well it just like brings up questions about like how can you combine residential and industrial uses so that you can have a more of a transition into that neighborhood. And then you have like the random remnants of like whoever didn't sell their building, you know, like it's... Right. There's an interesting one like we could possibly walk over but in between brew hall like you can see how these whole development right and then there's like a car wash oh, in between really? and this what we've heard is that they just didn't want to sell like the oh. developer didn't want to they were negotiating yeah. and they were never able to beat their price and then the developer was like screw you we're gonna build around you <laughs> And here we are. This is the home of our little businesses. So um, this is where Faculty Brewing and Oddity Kombucha are located. This is the, the business that my husband and I co-own. And you want to walk across the street to it or do you? Yeah, sure, let's do that. Just watch for the bikes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we took the building in 2014 and it took about a year and a half to get through all the permits and renovation process and we opened our doors in 2016. Uh, so we've been around for about four years and before we took the building there used to be a, a bike shop in, in this space uh, which is associated to our community bikes which is a non-profit cycling association. Um, and when we took the building over, like Mount Pleasant was just starting to 
see, like, I guess it's new as a wave of new commercial uses moving here. I guess a few things to point out, like our business is kind of newer to the neighborhood, although we've been here for almost five years. It feels like it's a newer wave. We're bringing obviously younger residents to the neighborhood, which goes along with more or less at the same time is when a lot of the tech businesses started to set up shop in the industrial area of Mount Pleasant. So it kind of goes hand in hand with having young people move into the neighborhood that can support our business. So it's we've, we're definitely part of the both revitalization of the industrial area, but also the, gentrifi the gentrification that we're going to see happening in the next few years. Uh, and you can actually see quite the contrast between even the aesthetic and the, the look of her business in con contrast to Argo Cafe, which is um, a business that's been in the neighborhood. Uh, the research that I did is like they opened, I think, in the 1950s. And then the current owners took over about 20 years ago, and it was originally meant to be a it was like a very affordable diner serving the industrial workers of, of the neighborhood. And I mean, there is a very symbiotic relationship between them and us. Like this patio that we actually built for the brewery, we shared with them because when they open early in the morning, we're not open. So it's, it's a very friendly relationship. And I just think it shows how, although you're like the newcomer to the neighborhood, which you can be considered the gentrifier, there are ways to be integrated with what's already existing in the neighborhood. It's like you don't need to displace, but you can work with what's around you. Yeah, and I think there was a bit of fear of like, I imagine similarly to when you open a business in the downtown east side, there's a bit of fear of the people that are already there or like what conflict can come or happen between like, you know, like a new swanky brewery and what's already there. But I think we've experienced that there's always a possibility to just be, just coexist and be symbiotic and just support each other. Yeah, so why don't we go yeah. up the Cross road? The yeah. And you can see, like, if you look around and you pay attention, you'll start seeing a lot of murals. Uh, Mount Pleasant is the home base of the Vancouver Mural Festival. So although the Vancouver Mural Festival has grown beyond the boundaries of the neighborhood, this is like its home base. So a lot of the murals are concentrated here. When I started studying this neighborhood in school, it was, there, none of the modern breweries were here. Like there was only R&B, which had been around for like 20 years. But it wasn't like a cool area to come and hang out at all. It was just like a purely industrial neighborhood, maybe a few artists, studios or whatever, but it's completely transformed in the last 10 years. And I feel like in the last five years, the, this, I don't know, the pace of change has just been exponential. So we're standing in front of the Allsco building, and this is currently operates as a laundry service facility. And it's always had the same function. I did a bit of research. I couldn't find out when the building was built, but there's a photo that I can send you that has like horses and carriages like parked in front of it. So it's like before the car era, and it's always been a, a laundry, and it's changed ownership like a number of times over the years, but it's like, it's probably one of the, I imagine, one of the oldest industrial buildings that still remain in Mount Pleasant and it still keeps its original function mm, or its original yeah. use, which is quite unique. And then you can see across the street also the, the contrast of the old with the kind of very modern concrete. Brick and the concrete. See, I think that's what you'll see a lot in Mount Pleasant. It's like, in comparison to the rest of Vancouver, it's just like old building, new building. And then if we cross the street, then you'll see some of the original single family homes. So yeah, this would have been like what the, the homes looked like uh, when Mount Pleasant became Vancouver's first suburb. And you still see a few of them like spr sprinkle around the neighborhood. Um, so yeah, in just one corner, you can see at least three or four different building typologies and buildings of completely different era. And I think, I don't know, I wonder for, for other cities, I'm sure you 
in other places I've traveled, you see more of these contrasts. But for Vancouver, a city that's like so hyper planned and regulated, it's quite unique to see like a residential use next to an industrial use in Vancouver. If you ask the planning department, they'll be like, no. But here, just like it, it exists, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I think there's two things that happened almost simultaneously. One was the the boom in tech in the city. Hootsuite, I think, was one of, as far as I know, one of the first tech companies that moved to the neighborhood. Uh, I think there were a lot of animation studios that were already here, but I think it's like that kind of boom of tech and needing like cheap or more affordable office uh, right, rentals, and almost at the same time is when the liquor law change allowing for breweries to open and breweries can only be located in industrial neighborhoods so it's kind of like that's one of the fundamental conflicts is like breweries only can be located in industrial neighborhoods oh, right. tech and animation whatever they can be anywhere oh. and they choose to be here because like more affordable and there's probably yeah. cool it has some yeah, character cool. to it but they can pay like much higher rent prices. Sure. So there's, starts, there's starting to be a little bit of a conflict of like. So I like these corners, Fifth and Ontario. It's one of the areas in the neighborhood that you can see the most change. Like this is a very interesting project. It used to be um, a heritage industrial building right at that right corner. Uh, and it was renovated, I think it was completed in 2017, 2018. And I think it's like, I, I like the, the aesthetics of it. I think I like the, the, the fact that it kept the scale of the industrial building at the base. And they did a fairly good job at keeping small and independent businesses on the ground floor that activate the street level. So yeah, you'll see we have like Taco Fino in the corner and then there's some other business and then there's like a salad business called Field and Social further down. And it's quite lovely. And then also across the street, there's like a more of the traditional Mount Pleasant industrial building, which is purebred, a uh, very popular bakery. Also just right behind me, this is A and B models. So A and B is the company that builds the scale models for most developments in Vancouver. And they've been around for like 20 years, since the 90s or so. So yeah, it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Maybe, yeah, we can ask them. Hi, can we just, we're just doing a quick tour of the city. Can we just do like a, like a little video? This is so cool. You can probably find out more about the city by just coming here. Anyways, this is AMV model. They've been here forever. And <laughs> if you want to find out what development's coming to town, just come and visit them because they, they know it all. Also, I just really love how, because of COVID, now all the restaurants that were not allowed to have patios now have them. And it's just like a great pilot project for how nice it is to be able to activate the, the streets. There's going to be a lot of background noise of like machines and trucks and this is what it's like living here. Uh, so we're at Sex in Ontario. We pretty much haven't left Ontario Street and these are the twin buildings. So the one on my right uh, is the one where Oakenford is, is the first one that was built. Uh, and it's, I feel like it's quite a nice scale. It's like three stories. It's uses like just one lot. That's what I appreciate about the development. It's like kind of incremental. It's not like they took over the entire block and wiped it out. So uh, I would like to see more of that in the city, which is like kind of keeps the variety in the neighborhood, you know? Like you develop one lot and then the next building is like the shorter, more traditional one. Uh, yeah, I think it just brings more variation and keeps the character of the neighborhood. So they built this one, I think it's like 2017, 2016. And then immediately they started the development application for the exact same building right across the street. And they, 
literally just flip the, the drawings. <laughs> Which is smart, I don't know, I feel like... I don't actually don't mind it, like it's... If it was a terrible building, it would be like, why build two of them? But I think it's like actually like a pretty good piece of architecture. Uh, it's very functional, it seems. And then again, just like across the street, you can see some of the single family homes. Also, just right behind us, there's a couple more in here. Is that a business running inside the house? I think so. I think is there an industrial in an industrial zone you can run businesses from those homes? I do wonder, like, it's maybe an assumption we have as urban planners that's like everything has to play nice with each other, and sometimes it's actually the things that you don't have to. Play I around. yeah, and that's a notion like that I I feel quite strongly against to some degree. Like, think of most people when you travel to Europe or to Latin America, people are like, oh my God, the life of these places is so amazing. Why is that? It's because you have less of that regularity. There's more spontaneity to streets. There's more variation. So I feel like Vancouver has done a really good job at standardizing and creating very nice, clean environments, but it's missing that element of diversity and smaller grain kind of interventions. Uh, so I think like Mount Pleasant could be a place where that happens and we're able to preserve that finer grain type of neighborhood. I think Chinatown probably, hopefully, preserves some of that. Like, you know, every, every building was like a very narrow single lot, so yeah, um, yeah. That's one, one of the things that I remember originally when I was in school studying the neighborhood, that's one of the things that we noted was like the lack of, I mean, there is a street front and there's some degree of alignment in between buildings, but not so much. All of a sudden you'll find like, you know, like industrial and then single family home and then industrial again. And they're all different heights and some of them have different setbacks and it's fine. <laughs> you know? Nobody's like dying. <laughs> yeah. So I think like, I can't remember exactly the dates, but I think like about three years ago, there was a whole consultation because they rezoned this area to be able to change the use from industrial to like a more mixed use, comprehensive development uh, type. Which means like, whatever you want to do with it. Yeah. So you can see sort of like in this sign, Just like the scale of the project in comparison to what we were just pointing out, like the more like single lot or more incremental growth type of projects, whereas this is like massive. So I believe this is Main Street. This is one of the alleys. So it's like a full block and then like another building that's part of the same development kind of across the street. And you can sort of see here. Yeah. So there's Fifth Avenue, which is, this is Fifth, right? This is Fourth. Oh, so it's Fourth and Fifth. And then Main Street and Quebec. So it's the whole block. It's quite big. <laughs> I mean, I feel when, you, when I look at the renderings and whatnot, it's like quite an attractive project. It sounds like they're going to try to activate that alleyway and like a lot of commercial uses will be open towards it. So it can be like a very nice precedent of what you can do for a building in general and the city just like having more life on the street and mixed uses. It looks like there's tons of green spaces. 
and at the same time it's really encroaching into what was a protected industrial area in the city so I don't know it's not all good and it's not all bad it's just like the change is coming from all directions and uh, I think this was one of the last industrial enclaves in the city and there was like a strong focus on keeping manufacturing jobs in town which I feel like we're coming to the end of that era now and we'll see what happens unless we figure out how to keep manufacturing uses and make rents affordable in like new developments I think like that's about it yeah I think they did quite a good job with the WeWork building. Like it was like a very, not very attractive, uh, just industrial building. And they just cleaned it up, painted it white, added those kind of screens to it. And it's quite, quite nice. The mural, the city center motor Sorry, hotel. Motor hotel and yeah. So let's cross. So we are now crossing Main Street. I guess this is the other boundary of the what I call the, the industrial polygon of Mount Pleasant, which is down there. Um, and you can see like the much bigger scale development, residential, all the developments facing Main Street are allowed to be residential and it's just Quebec Street is the one where the industrial zone uh, starts. Uh, but it's kind of mixed, like once you get on the east side it's a little bit more after Main Street, it's, it's a lot more mixed between residential and industrial, this whole area down here. So you can see like this, this is fairly new. I think it was completed this year or late 2019. So yeah, these buildings are a whole mix of different, there's this patio, place where they sell patio furniture and then I think the one next door is like a, a big commissary kitchen so a lot of small food businesses operate out of there and the l'atelier pastisserie <laughs> that's the that's where the fabulous croissants are it's just like a hole in the wall and they're like yeah, well in so my cool. opinion some of the best croissants in town wow you would have never known that this was really out here i know kind of that first glance. yeah well, there's quite a few of those things around and then the mechanic you know like that <laughs> why not hi <laughs> yeah. Again, if you were to tell the city of Vancouver, I want to build a building where I'm going to put a car shop next to a bakery next, and then on top there'll be some residential uses, they'll be like, are you out of your mind? Yeah. <laughs> and yet it happens and everything's fine, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a uh, so this is one of the last stops. This uh, is a building where Main Street Brewing is located now. Uh, it's a heritage building that was restored and kept when the development next door happened. So they were kind of done in conjunction. And I think it's just like a good example of how you can do residential and keep the industry next to it. I would hope to see a lot more of that as, as the industrial area of Mount Pleasant continues to develop and the pressure 
because you can see how there's a pressure coming from the Olympic Village and from these sides, just like kind of creeping into that protected industrial zone. So it's inevitable that it's going to change and develop, but it's like, how can we do it well and how can we preserve some of the character of the neighborhood and preserve some of the original businesses that were there. Um, uh, so this is it. Thank you for watching this tour. Uh, it would have been lovely to host it in person, but maybe next year. Uh, I really enjoy just talking about the Mount Pleasant area. And if you're ever in Vancouver, I would encourage you to just venture out into those industrial streets because there's just so much to them and there's like little gems that you can discover walking around. So that's about it. Thank you.